Hey guys, uh, Shunji Bear here for BG Library. We're here of uh, the great champ, James Popolo in Salem, Oregon. Um, if you guys are watching right now, what's the website to come and find you, James? Uh, yeah, so if you want to check out the Academy, it's uh, skbjj.com. And uh, yeah, check out my Facebook fan page, throw me a like. Uh, you can follow all my uh, my journey, you know, on my path to uh, to uh, being as great as I can at Jiu-Jitsu, learning from the best, you know. Cool. So, uh, James, tell me a bit about you. Uh, where you were born, um, you know, where you were born, what you did for school. Because it's an interesting story um, that I know personally. James was a school teacher, and um, he quit being a school teacher, and now he's a business teacher full time. And uh, for you guys out there that you know, sometimes you guys have doubts about taking a chance to find your passion. Uh, I think James is a is a, is a good example for a lot of you guys. So um, just run us through a little bit, like you know where you're from, um, you know how do you, what do you do besides jiu-jitsu? How do you get into jiu-jitsu? Uh, yeah, I'm from uh, Oregon. Lucky to be from Oregon. I've done a lot of traveling and uh, I always like coming back home. I definitely feel blessed. Uh, I was born here. I've been raised here. Um, lived in Salem most of my life. Uh, and uh, yeah, I kind of grew up like most normal American kids played basketball and football and uh, you know always admired pro athletes and like always wanted to be a professional athlete um, since I was really really young kind of just grew up super competitive like you know, I'm sure some of my friends and uh, people who know me when I was a kid could tell you some stories about on the basketball court of just like you know trying to fight people uh, and, as big as you are <laughs> <laughs> yeah just definitely like uh, just kind of a rough and tumble kid like to uh, like to win a lot it used to be you know kind of crazy about it and uh, you know so that passion just kind of has just been part of who I am and um, yeah so I ended up I graduated high school and didn't really have any offers from anywhere big to play football or basketball and uh, so I ended up going to University of Oregon and was kind of looking for the next competitive thing and uh, was lucky enough to find Jiu Jitsu and basically through my, my dad we had seen the early UFC's when I was uh, in middle school so I was like 13 mm -hmm. and How old uh, are you now? I'm 28 years old. Yeah, 28 now. Um, and so he, I told him I wanted to box. I was like, oh, well, I want to do something different, you know. And he was like, oh man, don't box. Which I'm definitely glad I didn't get into it now. Reading all the stuff about traumatic brain injury and stuff, and like I said, being a teacher and stuff. So I'm kind of like uh, glad I didn't go down that route. But jiu jitsu was, you know, once I took my first class, uh, I did it actually as a rec class at U of O. So three of my credits at U of O were uh, jiu jitsu. So I was definitely nice. Um, but yeah, I, I took my first class and I just like immediately, it was like, this is what I was meant to do, you know, wrestling mm -hmm. around with my dad as a kid and just, uh, you know, always was kind of, I, I tell, you know, my students, I was always kind of doing jujitsu, but I didn't know what jujitsu was, you know, mm -hmm. it was like kind of the same thing. And, um, you know, once I found it, it was like just an addiction, you know, I was mm -hmm. started the first, uh, probably about six months I was training. I was still doing other things um, and, you know, only training like two hours a week. Do you remember who was your first teacher? My first teacher, Ryan Kelly, right. um, right. down in uh, Eugene, Oregon. Okay. Like, I definitely think one of the uh, best first teachers mm -hmm. I could have had. Definitely, uh, he had trained with Hickson and, you know, a guy who's kind of an original, uh, one of the first black belts in Oregon. And I uh, feel really lucky because he definitely mm -hmm. got me stoked about Jiu Jitsu. Cool. Like, he really set that tone where I was like, man, I just want to get better. And pretty much uh, started training twice a day after about six months. I was just like, this is what I want to do with my life. And uh, yeah, I just kind of went from there. I was still going to school the whole time. I uh, started when I was in college as a freshman, and so I've always been doing, I've either been working or being a student full time my, my whole career, up to uh, a year and a half ago when I was able to make the switch to go full time. But uh, yeah, I ended up entering my, uh, one of my first tournaments was the Worlds mm -hmm. in 2007, the first year. Uh, it was in America. And uh, just have that distinct memory of going down there and thinking, I hope I can win one match. Mm -hmm. That was my goal, one match. And uh, I ended up winning six matches and made it to the final. Uh, and I actually I fought Luke Rockhold. Wow. Uh, <laughs> of all people, it was kind of a funny uh, mm -hmm. story that way back then, Luke Rockhold. Uh, and I fought in the blue belt heavyweight finals at the Worlds. And uh, he ended up beating me on points. Oh, wow. And uh, after that, it was just like... An addiction, like I, and and that was like really the moment that kind of crystallized everything. Yeah, I got this medal on my wall, um, the 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 silver from the worlds. Um, 
I definitely think it's the most important. Metal. This is 07, yeah, yeah. 07, yeah. I, I think cool. it's, it's the, yeah. Yes, yeah, so that was the first time I learned about you and uh, Raphael when you guys yeah. both won gold, yeah, yeah, gold right? Yeah. So it was uh, it was a good year for everyone. We just didn't know it at the time. Yeah. Uh, we would meet up and stuff, but it's definitely kind of yeah. Uh, but but you were you. under a guy that was under Megaton, right? Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. where I kind of knew because uh, yeah. you know it's a, it's a fun story. Like when I got to America, a lot of people like, oh, are you teaching the gringos? I said no, I'm teaching my brothers. So um, I I always thought anybody like like. Dude had, but I think we had a contact before. I got to see him a few times, but just knowing because he was a student from Megaton, uh, and, and then for sure I have good eyes for this. So it's pretty cool. So then you get where's that gold there? It's from. Yeah. So Somewhere. so after that, so 2007 was kind of that that tipping point where I was like, man, I'm I'm gonna do jujitsu. I love uh, jujitsu, and again, training twice a day. Uh, kind of not really living the col uh, the college lifestyle. It's like, oh, come party. It's like, no, I've gotta wake up and train and. Mm -hmm. um, you know, kind of uh, just already dedicating my mm -hmm. life to it, and uh, yeah. So 2009, uh, I was or yeah, the uh, I was able to uh, get bronze at the world's uh, purple, my first year at purple belt, and then came back at purple belt in 2009, and that was my first uh, experience winning the world championships, and uh, definitely another super super cool experience. And that was actually little uh, known fact is actually Shanji was coaching against me. Was I? In the finals of the 2009 World Championships, yeah, uh, it was against Johannes Waith, who was oh, now a teammate okay, and, yeah. and a friend and uh, an awesome guy. And you know, it's just a it's a small world, but yeah, yeah it was uh, Solo and Shanji <laughs> coaching against me. Obviously, well, it's a but different but different well, experience yeah. back then because it was Johannes was students, their guy. Yeah, 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 of course. Yeah. Good, good German, good German brother, black belt, yeah, awesome, you know, awesome guy, awesome guy. That's good. So, all right, so you beat him, right? Yes, yeah, yeah, you could tap him. Yeah, it was definitely, uh, definitely, you know, there's definitely moments in your life uh, I've had where you, you kind of like have the odds against you and uh -huh. Johannes, uh, I heard stories and... Uh, because I think he won the year before. Yeah, and people were saying that he was beating the black belts uh -huh. during training and like at the camp and that he was going to smash me <laughs> and he was going to do this and that yeah. and, you know, I was like, yeah, uh, cool. you know, I didn't really know what was going to happen, yeah, but, but I was lucky enough to, uh, to yeah, you know, things kind of, you know, sometimes... Things are meant to happen a certain way, I guess, and uh, yeah, that was definitely a, Thing a, a good, good moment for sure. To it. Yeah, that's cool. And then uh, nationals, nationals. Yeah, these are all the kind of the original medals uh, from blue, purple, uh, a couple brown belt medals in there. Pan so, oh, the 2091 Pan Ams and World. Yeah, that was that purple belt, uh -huh. and then uh, 2011 won at brown, the Pan Ams at brown belt. Brown belt. That's 2010. 2010 silver. Oh, yeah. and then for sure that's a moment that I remember a lot. Oh, yeah. Talk about, about that moment right there. <laughs> yeah, so uh, in the Nogi Worlds. Um, Not just that, but you can see here we got to Raider, Lovato, and, and, and James. And me as a coach, I was super proud to bring my gringo power <laughs> into the world and, and, yeah. and, and sweeping three divisions in the black belt unprecedented. You know, nobody mentioned this. Um, Nobody told them the media, whatever magazines talk about Jiu Jitsu, of course they talk about whatever they want. But for the first time, three Americans have won a black belt, adult, and nothing said. So you probably heard it here first Big <laughs> Library, Tibet Jiu Jitsu, Lovato, Raider, and James Popolos, who in three divisions of the world, Nogi, that was amazing. I was very uh, glad to be the coach that day. Gave my life for those guys, and that was totally worth it. Have those three guys winning there, and that was amazing. Showing the, the power that you know we're gonna show the world to those guys. Super proud. So yeah, great um, moment, great moment for sure. So Definitely James, you know, I want to thank you. Like to mention, that's that's your year's accomplishments, right? This is 2014. This is uh, actually like the last four months. I've last four I did months. 14. I did 14 tournaments in 2014. So yeah, I have some more. Uh, Five belts and yeah, unfortunately fell in the semifinals this year at uh, at, at Nogi Worlds, so that you know never feels good. But uh, I definitely plan on being back on mm -hmm. top for 2015. Um, and uh, yeah, but it's you know a year of definitely a lot of growth and mm -hmm. uh, you know. And this is on a black belt. All right, James. So we talk about a lot about those accomplishments and you know me as one of your coaches, or instructors. I know exactly what you had to go through and I think like I said a lot in the beginning of this interview a lot of people want to associate with that 
because you're a full-time school teacher, how old were the kids you used to, to, to teach them? Uh, yeah, I taught 6th and 7th grade math, so they were between 11 and 13. So a math teacher? Yep, teaching math. And uh, you did, did you teach, teach them every day? Yep, five days a week. Definitely, uh, obviously, summer's off, so that was a lot of time when I'd try to get time, try to make it to train in L.A. Mm -hmm. or try to go out to Oklahoma and, and get extra training. But, yeah, I mean, it's, uh, you know, it's, you know, coming from a, kind of more traditional mm -hmm. American background, get, you know, got to go to school, got to get an education, mm -hmm. which I'm very grateful for, um, you know, and definitely my years of teachings have served me very well because, you know, my profession, mm -hmm. you know, uh, is teaching, you know, jiu-jitsu now, and, um, but yeah, I've, I've either been a full-time student I or uh, or working as a teacher until I was able to make mm -hmm. the switch, so yeah, starting in 2005 when I uh, started training, I was uh, at U of O working mm -hmm. on my undergraduate and then uh, once I graduated then I was working on my master's in education and then I taught public school for four years taught, mm -hmm. uh, like I said teaching math and uh -huh. then uh, yeah I mean basically after 2007 I've, I've basically been wanting I had wanted to do jiu-jitsu professionally since then but uh, you know as a blue belt jiu-jitsu was much less uh, well known in the states mm -hmm. and it was just not really an option because mm -hmm. you know, and, you know, needed to support myself and, and my wife and everything, and so yeah, just kind of had to slowly build. And I opened the academy while I was still working full time, so there's been lots of crazy, you know, 16 hour days. Mm -hmm. See my wife for an hour, wake back up and go go again, and um, you know, a lot of like hardship. And you know, I think some of my competition results were, um, you know. Not to make excuses, but definitely harder when you're doing mm -hmm. all those things. And um, no, it's not excuse because, um, whether, as, we, as you can see, for your silverware, you had a breakthrough from brown to black. So pretty much we started. Uh, you know, of course you, you were a world champion, and and I can't even make an analogy of Saul. Saul wasn't really a big champion until he got his black belt, and he just like, okay, I'm a black belt, I'm not gonna lose. And then he became the legend that he is. And we can see the breakthrough came in the end of your career, almost reaching a black belt, which you got a world championships, and and you got all those open. So, um, what was the point? Um, literally, just said, okay, I'm gonna turn in, and I'm gonna tell my uh, my boss, I'm not the teacher anymore. Just, just what what was through your mind? What emotions you came? Because it's a big it's a big move. Because uh, you mentioned that you wanna do jujitsu professionally. And as we know, jiu-jitsu, you know, is not a really a very uh, rich industry. And a lot of us uh, professional fighters, we have to go and open schools and do seminars to hold ourselves because sponsors are not the greatest. Um, most of the competition, they're all amateur, but they require us to be professionals. So just just give us this emotion about what did you feel like? Do you feel like, oh man, am I making the right move? I have something that, you know, I have a steady job and now I have to go into something that I have to deposit a lot of money in it and energy in it and change it. Like I said, your wife now works for you. Just guide us to that to that, to that, that transition. Yeah. Um, that was definitely super, super difficult decision to make, you know, whether this is the right thing or, um, you know, and I, I feel like it's continued to progress and I feel like now a year and a half in, mm -hmm. yeah, I'm a, it's, I've really turned a corner to where I know that this is my life's work, mm -hmm. and I think when I was teaching and when I first made the transition, you know, there was that fear like, oh, okay, well, if this doesn't work out, you know, I'll try this for a year and see what happens, or I'll try this for two years. I didn't, I just told my, my you know, basically told my boss, like, you know, I, I love my job, but, you know, this is a passion of mine. I'm young. I got to, I got to pursue this. I'm going to regret this if I'm older, if I don't really try to pursue mm -hmm. being the best I can be. And, uh, yeah, you know, giving up financial security and benefits and all that, you know, and I think, like, also having to explain to my family and, you know, they've always been super supportive, but, you know, people don't want you quitting your full-time job where they know that you're going to be able to make your mortgage payment and uh, to do something where it's, um, you know, it's much riskier. Um, but, yeah, I'm lucky that I, you know, put in the time and, you know, I took the risk to to do this and I think that you know it, it really is a situation where it's all about belief you know and like you know, I just have been slowly having to like you know build more and more confidence yeah starting from the blue belt and all these different breakthroughs and now it's like you know my wife's about to 
be done working as a teacher as well, oh, and we're we're going all in. And you know, I understand that now. You know, my my goal is you know getting into teaching was to impact people's lives, and you know, how do I make the biggest mark on the world in a positive way? And you know, obviously, I love competing, and that's like a huge passion of mine. But now I really understand that this is my life's work, mm-hmm. and that you know, running this academy and teaching people how to defend themselves and uh, you know, the confidence and all of the benefits of jujitsu, um, you know, that's really going to be the, you know, the legacy that I want to leave. And I think like, you know, you know, the, I'd much rather be known as a great teacher than a great competitor, mm-hmm. but obviously want to be doing both yeah. just like, you know, <laughs> Shanji and Solo and Raphael and, um, you know, be known as, uh, you know, be able to, to do both. And so, um, but yeah, you know, there's definitely like uh, a lot of risk involved. But uh, you know, you got to have a supportive team. You got to have supportive students. You got to have mm-hmm. people who are behind you. And I think it really is true that like no one's self-made or whatever. Mm-hmm. It's like, you know, everything that I'm doing is a product of all of these people who are helping me. Mm-hmm. And uh, you know, I really feel like at this point, like 2015, I feel like you know I've been talking uh, to my wife and my family a lot, and you know, my students, and I, I really feel like right now everything I've done I'm at base camp right Mm -hmm. now you know I have and I and I really believe in all the people helping me I have the best you know coaches in the world Um, things are set up I have great strength conditioning coach Luke Tyree uh, my judo coach my wrestling coach you know all my support systems and I feel like I'm at base camp and now it's time to go for the summit that I'm I'm making 2015 like there's no more you know there's no more doubt like this is the time that i'm 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 charging to the top and uh that's that's my plan you know yeah. that i'm putting in the work and i know I, I deserve it i believe in it and uh i have way too many people behind me to stop oh, so well, we've done this together for sure so james there's a lot of sad you know um not gonna ask your opinion about you know a couple things we talk a lot of people are talking about how BJJ is boring now, is is these and that and um, and uh, for example you is you know like Sal is one generation and then there's me and then there's Lovato and there's you. you you're pretty much the fourth generation kind of lineage of Hibiru Jiu Jitsu and uh, what you what do you think has changed into the the Jiu Jitsu competitors mentality that the now is this grand thing. People talk about rules. What's the best rule? Uh, oh, this position is bad. Uh, what's your opinion about what you think has changed in the jiu-jitsu mentality that that has made you know this culture now that BJJ is boring? I think you know. I think it's kind of like a a progression. Yeah, and I, the, what I've seen, and I think you know the way if. if you know, my understanding of jiu-jitsu history and, and my interpretation is that it started out as a self-defense art mm-hmm. and it was about being able to defend yourself. And so then the competition started, but you still have people training for self-defense. Mm-hmm. And so you have people who aren't thinking of, of course, people are playing with strategy, but, um, you know, as the sport has progressed, I think there was kind of that, that's, you know, I hope that it's not a sweet spot in time where it continues to digress but towards you know a more boring sport version where I think that you're looking at the 2005 to 2009 window mm-hmm. where you have Sean Hibero, you have Rafael Lovato, you have Solo, you have Homolo, you have Hodger, uh, Andre Galvao, I mean you can just keep going, I mean the amount of amazing Marcelo, I mean it's like you, you know I'm sure there's a million Terere, like how many good guys are from that generation that you're looking at that are just you know, going for the submission, and you know that you're going to watch something, and you're going to see, like, wow, what's going to happen? Mm-hmm. Like, what is going to happen? Something awesome is going to happen. I'm going to see something I have not seen before. And now I feel like it's definitely to the point where you could see two top guys go against each other and kind of know that, man, it's, it's, it's probably going to be boring. Mm-hmm. And that's sad for the sport, I think. And I think it kills the spectator friendliness and the vibe and if you took someone to see uh, a tournament and I think you're going to see people say like oh, I don't understand I don't understand and that's like such a sad thing because how beautiful jiu-jitsu is and how much you know 
like the, how incredible uh, it is as a sport and as an activity uh, to get that sort of feel is just like just sad because I don't think the essence is there. And so I think like for me, and I think that's the other thing is it's an art, you know. So everyone has to put their own interpretation on it. And I thought this quote that I heard Solo say after the Worlds really really stuck with me. And, and I think I think about all the time is. I, he said he watched the worlds and he said I saw a lot of people who want to win but I didn't see many champions mm -hmm. and that's where it's like for me I want to be a champion mm -hmm. I, I, being a champion is much more important than winning and uh, you know you can't blame people I think there's a lot of pressure on a lot of the guys coming up now uh, to win early and win before they're ready to develop into the champions that you know mm -hmm. are, are, are kind of a little more old school uh, but I think there's a resurgence. You know, I think mm -hmm. there's a lot of people who want to see the submission. You have a lot of submission-only fights um, and organizations that are going, and, and people are hungry for that mm -hmm. because the submission is what it's about. You know, mm -hmm. it's an art that comes from the samurai, and in the end, when you are in a life-and-death struggle, right, the whole point is that, right, you cut your opponent's head off exactly, and yeah. that is the finality of the fight it's you, not scarred yeah suit. it's <laughs> not that i i nicked you with my sword and okay i had more damage so i won that's no yeah. that's not how it goes like yeah. one of us is not going to come out of this alive yeah, yeah. you know and obviously that's a little extreme for what we're mm -hmm. doing because it's the sport and you know we've it's a little more gentlemanly mm -hmm. but i think that in the end is like you know, I'd much rather lose by submission than lose by advantage. I think because mm -hmm. I want to. I don't. Wanna, I don't want to think, man, that I that I leave it out there. Mm -hmm. You know, and I think that's gotten me in trouble in the past. And as I've kind of started learning more as a black belt and like how to channel that and how to you you know more of the strategy, but you're still fighting for the submission mm -hmm. um, as opposed to taking crazy risks. But I definitely, you know. Like I said, I, I think that there's definitely, uh, I don't know if, different rules, it's not the rules, it's the mentality. Mm -hmm. exactly. You know, I think that, that saying, yeah, right? you know, it's like we were talking about, it's like, if like you we were talking, the, yeah, Like we were talking earlier, people were talking about, <coughs> take, get rid of advantages, like for example, the advantage where the advantage came in to the rules was a good thing, you know, because, the, like I said, the mentality was still the mentality of winning, but uh, the human being is very adaptable. You know, and uh, like I said, we can't blame them for trying to win. And I think what happened was now that advantage is like, you know, you don't have to accomplish something because you know if you don't accomplish something, you're still going to be rewarded. Yeah. So it became of the art of almost accomplishing something. Yeah. And, and that's something that, that, that <clears throat> I really fight a lot against. And, um, you know, James, what do you expect for you 2015? Just tell the guys, you know, about your work here in Academy. What what can we expect for 2015 for James Pablo? Yeah, 2015, you know, 2014 I think was the year of, you know, just being super active. Uh, I did 14 competitions uh, wow. was all over the all over the world, all over the country uh, competing. And, um, you know, I think that that was definitely a super important time to be really active and kind of have that time. And uh, 2015 is uh, really a time where I'm going for quality mm -hmm. over quantity, I guess, and uh, really focusing my energy here on my academy and trying to, um, you know, help it reach its potential. And I definitely know the, the things that I've implemented and working on is I'm, I'm getting better at, at uh, mm -hmm. teaching. I'm getting better as a, as a uh, business owner and, like I said, with the help of my wife. So that feels good to have a, a solid base here. Um, and, you know, as far as competition, uh, I've been working closely with Luke Tyree, like I said earlier. Uh, I'm moving up from super heavyweight to ultra heavyweight. Uh, I was about 215 pounds walking mm -hmm. around. Usually I'm about 235 right now. Uh, green strength, right? I've been eating, been eating uh, lots of meats, lots of vegetables, uh, and uh, yeah, just trying to get big. Uh, just, uh, you know, really feel very good physically. My diet's cleaned up. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, like I said, we're we're headed to the summit. You know, I'm 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 definitely feel that it's uh, it's time to really make a, a serious run and and show that not only flashes of, of brilliance that I can really be one of the greats in the sport. And uh, like I said, I, I feel like uh, you know it's it's time because it's the Hibero, you know fourth generation of Hibero, and I I feel the uh, I feel the you know I wouldn't say weight, but I feel like 
you know, the, the honor of representing Hibero Jiu-Jitsu and, uh, you know, I believe that Hibero Jiu-Jitsu belongs on the top of the podium and uh, that's what I expect for 2015. Well, well speaking about 2015, um, I didn't get to compete at ADCC in China, but I had him representing me and uh, hopefully, you know, he's already saying he's going to be 240 pounds, so he's not going to be my division. <laughs> I'll, I'll get back to my division and he gives back to me. So, uh, I wasn't there. So, uh, and um, people didn't, you know, didn't have the chance to know that we brought a big team, like yeah. Team Lovato brought, how many people you had in there. Talk a little bit about how Hibero uh, was represented in the ADCC 2013, because I'm competing this year for sure, and hopefully we can get his team back and uh, and close it out. So, talk a little bit about your experience. What do, you, do you, how do you feel about? You know, like I said, people don't know you much. All of a sudden, you're like you winning the world championships, and you all the way in the the most prestigious prestigious no gi tournament in the world. 2011 was you know was 11, yeah. my first time going to ADCC over in England and uh, being a part of it and being able to watch. Um, and uh, 2013 definitely was a, a great year. We had a great camp. Everyone was uh, on point. Unfortunately, yeah, Shanji wasn't able to make it, yeah, but. It was hard, uh, yeah. Really, like an amazing run for the for the team. You know, I definitely felt, uh, you know, you know, bad that I wasn't able to go farther. Um, I I was I felt really good in my match and ended up getting caught in a heel hook, which is you know something. In, in the end, you got to work on your weaknesses, and that's something that you know I've acknowledged as one of my weaknesses, and definitely plan on addressing and and really being able mm -hmm. to uh, to go much farther in 2015 and really uh, be ready to uh, to make a serious serious run. But uh, man, Dop did awesome. Jared Dop, one of the purple belts, you know, super super beast mode guy. Um, he was able to make it into the the semifinals and uh, almost beat Cyborg. He mm -hmm. beat Vinny Magalesh. Uh, had, he beat uh, Leo Nogueira. I mean, he just had an incredible run out there. Um, it was you know just cool to be there coaching and, and mm -hmm. part of it after I was knocked out. Um, you know, Rafael Lovato, uh, my. Uh, kind of immediate instructor, I guess. Your pupil, he ended up getting second place. Mm -hmm. Really close match with Home Alone in the yeah. final. I don't know how much that meant Last to him. Last minute or something. Yeah, like he that. got his back taken uh, after having some really good attacks, mm -hmm. almost finishing a heel hook, and uh, he got he 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 lost in the finals. I know that was super tough, but I mean, obviously an amazing showing. Got a bunch of submissions on the way to the mm -hmm. final. Beat uh, Pablo Popovich, and you know, just a really great showing. Uh, and then yeah, Justin Rader finally um, showed that you know he finally showed that if you give him the right bracket, he's mm -hmm. gonna be on the podium. So this time he didn't have to fight Hoffa uh, mm -hmm. Mendez in the first round, and he ended up uh, placing third and beat uh, oh, Meow Brother yeah, and uh, uh, yeah, and beat uh, and Tankinho third, yeah. and just a, a a great tournament for him. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, you know it was definitely a big day for the team. Obviously, again, like pushing forward and uh, getting better all the time. Good, good. So, it's, so you came back get better than that. Me as a you know a young steel competitor, I feel so proud to be able to sit down here and uh, and see how these amazing things happen. James coming from a um, school teacher all the way to a world champion and multiple whatever opens they put up there in front of him, <laughs> he'll buy those medals. Building this huge school in Salem, you know, Salem Kaiser Brazilian Jiu Jitsu SKBJJ.com is one of our affiliations here on the Lovato Junior. And, uh, you know, guys, just uh, I hope you guys have enjoyed, get to know a little bit about James, about his experience in life and what he has done to, to fulfill his dreams. I think because uh, Jiu-Jitsu, there's always something to everybody. I think you just have to you know, listen to your heart and, and uh, you know, believe what you can do. And uh, now he's taking his whole family, you know, and, that, and that's pretty much a lot of things you said, you know, about your family, about, you know, how your, how your parents gave you a lot of support, how your high school sweetheart with your wife, you know, give you all the support. This is very important. We don't do this by ourselves. You know, uh, all my wins in all those years, I do, you know, I have to you know, thank them because they're the one pushing me in all the time since they were like brown belts and, and, and purple belts and black belts and, and I feel great that I, the circle comes around and now we got to learn from them, uh, work in our, you know, in our weaknesses and uh, definitely um, we still have a couple good years, still 28, I turned 34 this year and um, I think we still have a lot to do 
And, uh, just beginning. Just beginning. Just beginning. Just so beginning. Uh, thank you, PGJ Library, you guys for listening to us. I hope you guys enjoy a little bit of uh, James Popo technique. Uh, definitely something that uh, we haven't really seen in, in our library yet. Um, it's something that definitely I'm going to apply on my game because uh, I'm going to be really focused on the OG this year. And uh, James, last consideration, I'm going to say hi to your grandma, your father, somebody. Say thank you for your sponsors. Yeah. Now is your time to. Yeah, I definitely appreciate all the support, guys. Uh, like I said, um, you can follow my, my journey on, on Facebook. Uh, you know, definitely thanks to Origin, the top gi company, right, in the world, changing the game with the gi. Um, definitely, like I said, Green Strength and Luke Tyree for getting me physically prepared, feeling healthy, feeling uh, super, super strong. And, of course, the great instruction I get from uh, Rafi Lovato Jr., Team Lovato, and uh, Hibero Jiu-Jitsu, Salo and Shanji, and, uh, of course, all my team here at Sam Kaiser Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, everyone uh, behind me. And, like I said, yeah, definitely appreciate uh, you guys, you know, being a part of it. And, you know, sky's the limit. Good. I'm in honor for that, brother. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.